We're now joined on the Sports Mix by the head coach of Jefferson Football, Craig Hunter. Coach Hunter, your team on Thursday last week got a 42-13 to win over Hedgesville. What were your takeaways from that game? Uh, you know, I thought I thought we came out, um, played hard, um, you know, did some good things, uh, you know, especially uh, you know, Tayshawn going down in that game. I thought we was able to keep things going, still keep a running game going a little bit. Uh, I thought Dylan had a breakout game throwing the ball. Uh, I thought defensively uh, we did pretty well. We still missed some tackles, but we don't we don't need to miss tackles. I thought Jackson Rockwell had a good game. Uh, I think he had like three interceptions. So I thought I thought we overall I thought we played played well. Um, I thought we you know we could have done some things better. We had two fumbles on two back to back drives. Uh, we got to make sure we clean all that stuff up going into this week. Uh, but other than that, I thought we played well. You know, with a short with a, with a short week uh, preparation. Yeah, you mentioned the short week uh, that will now kind of help your team, I guess, this week and giving you an extra day uh, to get ready for South Hagerstown. Um, what has been, I guess, the plan, or has the plan, I guess, changed at all with that extra day being thrown in? Uh, the extra day would be just a day of rest. You know, those kids, those kids had a had a short week, uh, turn back around uh, after after a big big emotional week against um, you know Martinsburg, coming back in a short week playing Hedgesville, uh, two EPAC opponents that know you very well. Uh, you know, the extra day they just gave us a day of rest, a day of rest for the kids where they don't have to worry about football. Just go get your bodies rested, take care of yourself, and we'll get back at it on Monday. So we gave them Saturday off. We typically come in on Saturday, uh, do some recovery stuff, and then watch film on Saturday. So we gave them Saturday off. Uh, came in on Friday, watched film, and just let them go. And then, like I said, gave them Saturday off, came back on Monday, uh, just regrouped to get back into normal with normal. Halfway through the season now, your team sits at two and three what are uh some things though here at the halfway point that are some new things that you've learned about your team that i what about my team i think it's learned it. about your team yeah, sorry um yes. I, I think you know they got they got a lot of grit to them a lot of fight to them um you know uh those are some things that, that we you know you look for teams especially coming down the stretch uh when it's getting the crunch time and you're going to get into some bigger games uh, and then hopefully, well, not hopefully, everybody's in the playoffs now. You get in the playoffs, um, you're going to need that. You're going to need to see if they, how, how will they fight through adversity, how will they, they battle through things. And uh, I think not only have we battled through things in games, but I, I would say season-wise. Uh, you know, we didn't start off with the best of uh, starts this season. So, and watching them just battle through it and get better each week and uh, is, is something a test to what, they, what they're all about. And I you know learning that about this team is something special. You guys got South Hagerstown this week. They come in uh, one and four. What have you seen from them so far this year? Um, you know, they they kind of had they changed some quarterbacks throughout the season. So I think they've found the guy they want to go with. Uh, he's more of a dual threat guy, more mobile runner. Um, so they're going to try to make sure they get him in the mix. Defensively, they're going to try to uh, get after us a little bit. Defensively, uh, they they will play some man to man. We've seen it. Uh, I don't know if they'll do it this week. Uh, they've shown some man to man, but in the last couple games, they haven't really shown a lot of man to man. So, you know, we we'll have to play that by ear. Uh, but you know, we're going to continue to just uh, work on getting better each week and set a game plan based on how they're going to set us up defensively and. Offensively, what they're going to, what, what formations they're going to give us, and it's going to play our best, play our best football and try to get a victory. What is kind of your message, I guess, directed towards your team for going into this week's game against South Hagerstown? Um, the message for us right now is, is don't look too far ahead. Uh, you know, take one game at a time, week by week. Focus on that opponent. Don't take any opponent lightly, based on record or whatever you do or whatever you see. Take them one game at a time, one day at a time, one team at a time. Don't take anybody lightly. Don't go in there thinking that you're going to automatically do anything special. You know, just focus on on the day and the week that we got ahead of us. Don't look too far ahead. You mentioned uh, Roper going down in the Hedgesville game. Uh, do you expect to have him back 
soon? And uh, if not, who do you expect to step up? Um, we we're, we're playing it by ear. It wasn't it wasn't bad, um, but you know, like I said, we got games left. Um, so you know, he if we if we play, he possibly could play this week. Strong chance he could play this week. You know, we may put him in baseball terms. We may put him on a pitch count uh, because you know he, he's going to be more valuable to us uh, when it gets when it gets down the road. You know, playoffs. You know, in those situations, when it, you know they say in the NFL when it gets cold outside and everything, the weather starts to get changed. You've got to be able to run the ball. So, you know, he's our guy that we go to uh, running the ball. So we're going to need him healthy coming down the stretch. Um, so, you know, he probably will probably will be on a pitch count if we play him this week. Um, if we think we can get by without playing him, you know, just to keep him healthy and make sure he's 100% healthy, we may do that. But then we'll go with, um, you know, Leland Benner. We still got Dylan who can run the ball. And then uh, last week we put Braylon, Braylon Mumal back there. Uh, we still got, you know, Tony Allen can run the ball if need be. I mean, so we got guys who can get back there and run the ball. That's not a question of anything. We got we got bodies that we can put back there that can be efficient in running the ball, moving the ball on the ground. So you mentioned all those guys adding depth for your team and can interchange uh, between positions here and there depending on the week. How much does that really benefit your team on a week to week basis going down the stretch? Well, it gives us. It, we, we're finding out, you know, Tayshawn going down. We found some depth um, that we kind of thought we had, but we weren't sure because you know Tayshawn really doesn't come out the game a lot offensively. Um, so uh, Braylon Mumal being able to see exactly what he can do uh, was was good for us. And you know, Lulu and Benner, we always knew could run the ball hard. He's a downhill runner. Uh, and, you know, Tony Tony gives you the speed the speed aspect of things. Uh, being able to stretch and get outside and hit the hole very quickly. So you got all those guys that gives you depth back there. You can give, even if Tayshawn's available, you can get different looks. Where you can put one of those guys back there and maybe move Tayshawn out to the receiver spot because he can also catch the ball too and he can run good routes. So moving kids all over the field uh, gives added, you know, added thing to what teams have to prepare for as far as you know where they're going to be, where they're going to be lined up. You don't know what's going to happen when they're lined up there, it's different places. So. You know, it gives us it gives us a little bit of an edge in certain aspects of being able to do things, but also, you know, you're trying to figure out how to get these guys touches. You know, trying to get all these guys touches, trying to get the ball in the hands of your playmakers. It's only one football, so. All right, Coach Hunter. Any other thoughts about this week's game against South Hagerstown? If not, we'll get to the uh, last fun question here and let you go. Uh. No, nah, we're just going to go out and uh, try to play our best football and try to get a victory on Friday. All right, so last question here for you is, in your opinion, what are the greatest strengths and weaknesses of being a football coach? The greatest strengths and weaknesses of being a football coach? Yes, sir. Oh, my God, I have no idea. Um, of just any football coach. Yeah, I guess uh, just what uh, you've learned maybe. During your time um, as a football coach, communication, uh, relationships, strengths, uh, communication, building relationships, uh, you know, knowledge. Uh, I mean, those are those are three things uh, that can be, you know, strengths and weaknesses. Organization; uh, those things go both hand in hand. If you don't have those things, they're going to be weaknesses of you. You don't have an organization that runs into problems with your practice plans, how you set up practices. If you don't have good communication, then you're not going to get any across to your coaches or your kids. Uh, same thing with building relationships with your kids. Uh, they can come to you at any point in time and have questions or anything. They have to be able to have an open door policy and build a relationship with those kids so they feel like they can come talk to you. So those are the things I think to be strength and weak for the coaches. All right, Coach Hunter, thank you for the time. Best of luck Friday. All right, thank you. All right, thank you.